AI itself is just, I don't know, when I explain to people, I sometimes refer to it as, you know, statistical compression, right? You're just taking a mm. lot of knowledge and trying to compress it into this model that you can then use to make decisions quickly about something or use to make recommendations quickly about something. I think in that understanding, it, it stops being this alien intelligence that maybe I'm afraid of, maybe it's dehumanizing me. And it just, it just becomes a tool, but it's a tool that's inspired by the creativity and work of lots of people. I think that's powerful, right? It's a way that we're finding how do we amplify and make available creativity to more people in a way that maybe wasn't possible before. That's going to be a sticky mess because there are artists that have made these things that, that it was trained on that, you know, way of making a living is jeopardized. But on the flip side, maybe we should question our ideas about trademarks and intellectual property. And is there a value in, in making it so that anyone can create profoundly beautiful things and that the ideas are amplified, especially individual ideas. I think it's worth us exploring. I don't think you can just judge it as good or bad. The ex example I would give would be, there's a lot of talk about things like deep fakes, right? Mm -hmm. These like, yeah. videos yeah. that are gonna put people in compromising positions or situations maybe influence the way people think about people. Uh, I don't buy it. I mean, it's real. Of course, it happens all the time. You can encounter them all over the place. I think humans do a good job of inoculating themselves against new exploits. I don't think we're as bad as we look from the outside. I think I think mm. humans pick up on these patterns of manipulation within within a short amount of time. You go from not being able to resist clicking on somebody's top seven list of things you need to click on. Number four will make you do it. You know, right, right. now we laugh because we're totally immune to it. But when it came out, we have to all admit that that was effective. And we all clicked on a lot of lists that wasted a bunch of time. And I think it's the same with deep fakes. We're not going to be as manipulatable as we think. And in fact, with special effects and, and a budget, state actors, bad actors have been able to do this for a long time, decades, mm. right? You can do special effects, put people in compromising pictures or videos. We're just using AI to automate the special effects pipeline. Now, what's the good side of that? I think let's look at making movies, individual creators, people who make videos on, on platforms like YouTube, what if they could, with an idea, with a script, with their personal creativity, make a video with the production value of a studio movie? Like, mm -hmm. and, then, and then what matters is this incredible storytelling ability of an individual, not that you are you know, the equivalent of a, a bank for movie making that gatekeeps what ideas get out. I can't see, I can't see that being a downside if we can let individuals tell stories with this, again, maybe profound aesthetic beauty that, that complements the storytelling and what they're able to accomplish as a creator. Beauty at Work is brought to you by Templeton Religion Trust. If you enjoyed this clip, go check out the full episode. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps get the word out about the show. Thanks and see you next time.